In this video, I'm going to go through the story of how I became a completely self-taught professional software developer at the age of 21. And all of this began at a very young age for me. I've been playing video games for as long as I can remember. Some of my first and most vivid memories are of myself playing video games at the age of four. I was particularly in love with SimCity 4 and Wolfenstein Enemy Territory. These video games might not seem too appropriate for a four-year-old, but I'm certain that they were very transformative in allowing me to become who I am today and initiating a long-lasting interest in technology and programming. Through the years, I played countless video games and I soon realized that somebody was making these technological marbles that I had been enjoying for years. These guys gave me the power as a four year old to run around with a flamethrower, burning whatever I desire, or building an empire and controlling all of these wonderfully intricate things with the click of a button. It was love at first sight and it's not something that's faded. But the early years were hard. I was not fluent in English and the very little content available online at the time in the early 2000s was all in English. So this was a dry spell for me. I was trying really hard. I was going around all the websites, doing everything trial and error style, just clicking buttons until stuff worked. And I had some small successes. I was an early adopter of Roblox. It was rather simple and it could barely count as a game. It didn't come very far, but it did keep my interest up, which was well worth it. It was a struggle. I wasn't making progress. Programming didn't come naturally. So I gave up and I started pursuing film. I wanted to make movies. So for a few years, I focused solely on making short films and visual effects, which did cement my computer knowledge, but it kind of put my programming journey on a hold for a few years. Still, during this time, I was, of course, playing video games. And this feeling kept nagging in the back of my mind that I wanted to make my own. Of course, I could make a better video game. These guys were good, but I know what I like. I could make something way better. I feel like all of you have felt this before. And uh, of course, I was naive and incredibly stupid at the time. But during this time, I had spurts of progress. I eventually found out about Game Maker and although I primarily only used the drag and drop tools, these did allow me to make some customized experiences. And then there were a bunch of other softwares I tried, like Game Salad and too many to count. A lot of websites had some interesting features where I could do some drag and drop stuff. Nothing ever stuck. And my English was still bad as a 10 year old. But around 13 years old, my English knowledge seemed to crystallize and the amount of time I spent on YouTube significantly increased and I shifted my focus from watching Swedish content to English style content. And I quickly found myself learning a lot and advancing quickly. Technological topics were no longer out of bounds for me. I could understand most, if not all of the things said. This was a gigantic boon in my knowledge. At this point, I found Unity. I was maybe 13 years old. It was really early, but it allowed me to make 3D video games for free, which was something I had never imagined I could do. So with some good tutorials at, at hand, following the, in the great steps of Brackies and many, many more, I started making really bad video games. They were just copies of tutorials and I was coding in maybe JavaScript at the time. It was really bad. I wasn't learning anything. But whilst Unity was going less than well, I was doing a bit better on the game maker side. I had some luck and started to learn game makers programming language GML. Although a bit simplistic and not that powerful at the time, it still instilled some programming basics in me. I could now firmly utilize if statements and I was able to comprehend variables. This was a big deal because this meant I had some sort of base to work from. I kept working at GameMaker for a while. Once again, I gave up. It simply got too difficult and I wasn't making progress. And like many, I found something else to do. I pursued graphic design for a while and 
it was incredibly useful. Having a wide variety of skills has been incredibly helpful as a solo dev in many ways. Graphic design gave me a sense of design. I could tell if something was abhorrently ugly and that has been quite valuable. It has saved me many a times from bad UI design. And although the years may seem wasted to some, they are incredibly valuable in my opinion. As I grew older, I kept advancing and around 14, 15, I started to actually see some good progress in my Unity career. I started to gain a deeper understanding of C Sharp. Although not a lot better, it gave me the opportunity to make some stuff on my own. Although I was still mostly stuck in tutorial hell, relying on Bracky's tutorials to make very simple stuff. It wasn't until high school that stuff actually started working. In Sweden, in high school, you get to choose what kind of program and studies you want to pursue. And every the adventurous type I am, I chose game development, specifically game programming. And this gave me access to the programming courses. At this point, I was familiar with programming basics, but what it really gave me was some direction and a bit of motivation. The class was small, but we had an amazing teacher. This guy has gone on to do bigger and better things, but this allowed me to spend a lot of time thinking about game development during school. And it allowed me to work on my game development skills and get a grade for it. This was quite motivating, of course, and it's led me to actually start working on game development again on my free time. But this time, I thought ahead a bit. I was working more and more on simply programming, learning the fundamentals, object-oriented programming fundamentals, solid principles, and all of that stuff, the good stuff. I also started reading books at this point. Not a lot, but I started picking up on it. It took a few years after this for me to actually start reading as ferociously as I do nowadays, but it was a start. This is really where I started to grow. Through my three years of high school, I went from a complete noob to somebody who could make something semi-competently on my own without a tutorial. It was nothing crazy. I still struggled a lot, but it was something and I was proud. By the end of high school, I was able to make most of the stuff I could ever want to. And this was an amazing feeling, but I was still far off. In my last year of high school, 2020, COVID hit and all studies were suddenly remote. This was a big con, but also a huge plus. It gave me a lot more free time. I could actually dedicate my time a bit more directly. And it was during this time that I really started dedicating myself more towards game development and actually studying on my own. During this time, I made a bunch of projects that were not that great. And I just started project upon project upon project, never finishing anything. But by the end of 2020, and after my graduation, I felt a bit stuck. I wasn't really going anywhere. I wasn't improving as much as I wanted to. And since nothing was open, I decided to apply for a game programming vocational school with the expectation of going there in person and learning some stuff, meeting some good people. That was uh, not the experience I had. Yet again, my studies became remote, entirely remote for the entire education. I did not finish this education, but it did force me to work in groups, large groups, up to 15 people at times. This was incredibly valuable for me. This forced me to cooperate with people, talk to people before I did stuff. We had to version control. This was very important. It also forced me to try some new stuff. I had to use Unreal Engine and C++, and it also gave me some direction, but it was remote quickly devolved into, I get an assignment and I study on my own and then I turn it in. I don't consider that schooling. Most of that was on my part. I lost interest very quickly in the education and stopped showing up to classes sometimes, which isn't great, but it turned out fine. As part of this education is a forced internship. You have to do an internship for a set amount of months and nobody wanted to take us in. Some people had better luck than others, but that was one in 50. But with some trial and error and messaging people personally on LinkedIn, I found myself an internship for a small game development studio in Sweden. The work was yet again remote, which was unfortunate, but I was able to do work in my dream field for a company that had some good ideas. 
So I was working on this video game prototype and I loved it. I spent six months working on this game, mostly alone, which was a bit boring and at some times very demoralizing, but it gave me a purpose and I learned an incredible amount of stuff. The project did become quite large and that really helped me learn about project management. And during this time, I was building a resume. I was making projects. I made a personal website for myself. I was improving a lot and making myself a valuable asset in the game development market. But you know, it's a competitive market. So it took some time. During my internship, I had to make some money on the side. So I started teaching game development to kids. And it was quite fulfilling and really fun. And it forced me to actually have to go outside and do something a few times a week, which was valuable. It didn't bring in a lot of money, but it was a good experience. About half a year into my internship, I found a job posting for a small startup studio in Sweden. And I happily applied. I must have been among the first because they replied immediately. We had a good chat and a few weeks later, I got the job. This was, gosh, quite the good feeling because I, I suppose it was my first real job and it was as a game developer. And just that was amazing. But for a number of reasons, I was let go from the company, not the fault of my own or not theirs really either. And I was left with nothing to do, but it was another pin I could place upon my resume. So I looked ahead and felt completely lost. At this point, I had dropped out of my vocational school, so I had no degree and I had no job. So what do you do from here? I kind of panicked. I didn't do anything for a while. It was pretty hard, actually. I kind of had to face the reality that I'm not that marketable. I have no experience. I'm a kid and uh, selling that to a company is quite hard. So I thought, why can't I just sell myself as a company? So I started doing freelance game development and with my luck, I was able to get it going quite quickly. And I was making a few thousand dollars a week, mostly making small mobile games for just random people. People apparently have a thousand dollars laying around and they want a mobile game. So I was doing that. It was incredibly fun. By sheer luck, a guy on LinkedIn just messaged me. And after a little while, I got a job offer. We had one interview and the rest is history. I've now been working as a Unity developer for professionally for that company for six months and stuff's going great. And I've started doing this YouTube channel now that I have some extra time over. I can't tell you how amazing it feels to have reached this point. It feels like I've been working for 17 years to be here and I somehow succeeded. I always kind of assumed I'd fail, never really thought getting here was an option. Everything you see online, all of the software developers, all of the Silicon Valley type channels, they went to college for four years studying computer science. They did big internships at large American corporations. But here I am, no degree, and I'm still able to keep a job. So don't let the internet fool you. Although it is incredibly hard, your skills aren't that limited. Although it may feel limiting, you are incredibly skilled if you can move around Unity and program adaptly. Although I do Unity programming, I can do whatever. I am confident in my ability to take almost any programming job at this point. And that's from just an enormous amount of effort I put into this. Looking back, I started off as nothing but a naive young gamer playing games day in and day out. And just through sheer willpower and stubbornness, I'm now 21 and I'm here with a steady programming job. A lot of you want to do something similar. You may be older, you may be younger. You want to become programmers, game developers, most of you most likely. And I just want to assure you that it's possible. You can achieve this. I mean, for God's sake, I did this. I mean, I'm not that smart, but it's a battle. You're going to have ups and downs. You're not going to be the most amazing programmer at any point of your journey. If you are, why are you watching this video? The journey you take will be unique to you and you will learn a lot of valuable things. Although I do think that some of these vocational schools may bring value. 
they can easily be replaced by a YouTube video. So don't worry too much about these things. I'm extremely grateful for your support on my previous videos. I'm trying to up the quality as much as I can and to keep this channel going. I have a bigger project going on off screen here. You will go and see that shortly uh, in a future video. And I just want to say that you guys need a bit of optimism in you. A lot of my previous videos have been pretty negative. Just saying that it's really hard. You're going to fail. This is you're doing this wrong. This is bad. I want to throw some optimism into this. You can do it. Okay. Most of you can do it. So just do it.